There are a lot of commonly asked questions about Sublime Text and its licensing scheme and how licenses work. And they're all pretty easily answered, but pretty short on their own. So in today's video, let's cover the most commonly asked questions about Sublime Text rapid fire style. Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan here. Welcome back to another Sublime Text tutorial video. And the topic of today's video is licenses in Sublime Text. There are a lot of questions floating around about this and I thought it would be a great idea what with Sublime Text 4 being potentially just around the corner, fingers crossed, to cover some of these most commonly asked questions about licenses. Before we get into that, uh, legal disclaimers out of the way. I'm just a guy who is a Sublime Text fanatic, self-proclaimed. I am not affiliated with Sublime HQ in any way and I'm not a lawyer, so uh, don't take anything Thing I hear as absolute gospel because things do change over time. I've linked down in the description of this video below a link to the end user uh, license agreement and the sales fact that are available on the Sublime Text webpage. If you have any questions whatsoever about any of this, any doubts, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, look at those resources or contact the sales department of Sublime HQ to get your questions asked from an authoritative source. With all that uh, out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the questions and answers. What are the differences between the free version of Sublime and the paid version of Sublime? Technically speaking, there's no such thing as a free version of Sublime Text. It is commercial software that does technically require you to purchase a license for continued use. What it does have, however, is a freely available, fully functional, time unlimited evaluation version you can use to make sure that it's the right tool for you. The developers of Sublime want to make sure that you have the time necessary and needed for you to put it through its paces, configure it, use it, work with it, make sure it's the tool for you before you make that financial outlay for the license. And that license can be kind of expensive, so it's not unheard of for people to continue to use Sublime for an extended period in the evaluation version until they have the means to actually purchase a license. Now, if you have the means and you are using Sublime on a regular basis, you really should purchase a license. It shows your support for the developers. It supports continued development of Sublime Text and new features that are coming out, such as the new version of Sublime Text 4 that's just around the corner uh, sometime soon. Uh, and in all things, let your moral compass be your guide. But with that said, there are some minor differences between the evaluation version and the full version. They don't affect any of the functionality of Sublime. Uh, at, at all. Now those things are, uh, first of all, Sublime does an update check every time you start it up to make sure you're using the latest and greatest version and it'll tell you if there's a new version and allow you to update. If you'd like to use a later version of Sublime, you can turn this check off but only if you're a licensed user. If you're an unlicensed evaluation user, the developers want to make sure that you are updating and evaluating the latest and greatest version. Uh, secondly, the title bar will have the text unregistered in it if you're an unregistered user of Sublime Text as a reminder. And also, uh, every few saves, you will get a dialog box popping up reminding you that if you do like Sublime and you've decided it's right for you, you should actually purchase yourself a license. But apart from those three things, the functionality is identical. One extra benefit of having a license key is that you get access to development builds of Sublime Text, the builds that come in between stable releases. And that would give you right now at this point in time, as I'm recording this right now, the ability to test out the Sublime Text 4 versions that are currently available on the Discord. I'm evaluating Sublime, but something's not quite working right for me. Do I have to purchase a license to unlock features? No, absolutely not. The evaluation version of Sublime Text is fully functional. Anything you can do in the licensed version of Sublime, you can also do in the evaluation version as well. So if something's not working for you, hop on to the forum or the Discord and ask a question and we'll sort you out. The license fee is kind of pricey. Does Sublime ever offer updates or student discounts or bulk discounts? Now, we're not aware of any time that Sublime has ever been on sale, and they also don't have educational pricing either. However, business licenses are sold per seat, and the more seats you purchase, the cheaper it gets. So there is a bulk purchase option if you're a business entity. Is my license a subscription fee? Do I have to keep paying? Generally speaking, no. Most of the time, if you're going to purchase a license for Sublime Text, it's going to be a personal license, and personal licenses are not subscriptions. They give you a license to use the version of Sublime Text that was available at the time you purchased it, every version that came before, and versions that come become available in the update window, which as of right now is 
updates that happen inside of the three years of the time that you actually purchased the license. However, that does not expire. You can continue to use those ver licensed versions of Sublime Text in perpetuity, even if you decide you don't want to pay another license fee to get another three years of updates. Business licenses, on the other hand, do work on a subscription basis. If the company stops paying the subscription, they lose access to Sublime. I'm unhappy with my purchase. Can I get a refund? Well, it's hard to imagine anybody being unhappy with Sublime because it's such a great product. But yes, you can absolutely get a refund within 30 days of your purchase time. Just uh, contact the sales department and they'll hook you up. I got my license key in an email, but I'm not sure what to do with it. Inside of Sublime Text, all you need to do is head up to the Help menu, and there's an item in here that's labeled Enter a License. That's going to open a dialog box similar to this. All you got to do is paste your license key directly in here. Make sure you're using the format that you see here, including the begin and end license lines, and that everything lines up just right, because occasionally email programs do fiddle around the format of the mail. Once you're done, click the button, and you are licensed and good to go. I'm having a problem entering my license. It says it's invalid. There are a couple of ways that this might go. If you see a message similar to this one that says that your license key doesn't appear to be valid, double check that what you're pasting in is in the correct format. It should be something similar to what we see here. Uh, and then uh, that should work for you. The other thing that you might see is that your license has been invalidated. And if this happens, it means that your license has somehow leaked out of your possession onto the internet. And as a result, uh, Sublime has redacted it to make sure that people out there can't use the license key without paying for it. So all you have to do in this particular case is contact sales with your original sales information and they'll get you a new license. I'm a licensed user of Sublime and I entered my license, but I keep getting a dialog pop up telling me that I'm not. The only dialog that Sublime shows in this particular case is the one that you see every so often when you save reminding you to purchase. So if you're not seeing that one, then the most likely cause for this is you're using an, a third party package that's a commercial package such as Wilbon's SFTP package, which requires its own license key. So if you're doing something like that, double check the packages that you're using and check their readme files for how you can purchase a license and get yourself up and running. Is there a limit to the number of times I can install Sublime? There's no limit to the number of times you can use your license key to activate a copy of Sublime Text. The license is per user, not per computer. So you can install it on as many computers as you want, across as many operating systems as you want, as many times as you want, as long as you are the primary user of that system. Can I take my license to work with me and use it there? Yes, if you have a personal license to Sublime Text, you're allowed to use it on any computer that you are the primary user of, which includes work computers. And the license specifically allows you to use your copy of Sublime Text for anything you like, even if that's some commercial purpose for a business. I have a business license for Sublime. Can I take that home and use it there? Unlike personal licenses, which are owned by individuals, business licenses are owned by the business. That means you can take your business license home and use it there, but you should use it on a work computer or while you're doing a work-related task. Help, I lost my license key. I don't know what to do. No worries, my friend, we got you covered here. Just go to sublimetext.com and up in the top right of the page, you're going to see a link labeled support. Click on that. Right inside there is a link to license key retrieval. All you got to do is click on that link, enter the email address that you used when you purchased your copy of Sublime Text, and you will automatically get mailed a new copy of your license key. I lost my license key, but I don't have access to the email address I originally used when I purchased it. In this unfortunate situation, you need to contact the sales department for Sublime Text and they will walk you through getting yourself a new copy of your license key. I just had to rebuild my computer from a backup and now Sublime says I'm not licensed anymore. No worries, this happens to a lot of people and kudos to you for having a backup scheme on your system. All you have to do is re-enter your license key and everything will be fine. Why does this actually happen? When you enter your license information, Sublime stores a copy of your license in a binary coded format inside of its configuration location. You can find that location if you're curious by using preferences, browse packages from the command palette or the menu. That'll open the packages folder, go up one folder level, you'll see a folder named local and inside of there is the file containing your license. Now this binary license 
license file here contains your license information and also some information about the computer on which the license was activated. And this is a little bit of a safety mechanism because you are allowed to install Sublime on as many computers as you like, anywhere you like. It's very common to synchronize your configuration across multiple machines. And in doing so, you might accidentally leak the license information that's stored inside of this configuration location. So Sublime guards against that accidentally being leaked by making the file not be available on systems that appear to be different from the one where it was activated. But you can just reactivate your license and everything's great. Why do I have to keep re-entering my license key every time I start Sublime? Well, generally speaking, this shouldn't happen because, as we just mentioned, every time you enter your license information, Sublime stores a file inside of its local configuration directory that keeps a record of your license. So there's a couple of things that could be going on here. One, your profile information could be being erased uh, by something on your system, perhaps if you're in a particularly networked environment. Uh, and in that case, the only thing that you can do is get your configuration information to not be stored there, perhaps by using a portable build of Sublime text instead. The other time that we've seen something like this happen is when Sublime is installed on virtual machines in a pool, and every time you log in, you end up on a different virtual machine than the one you were on before, in which case Sublime thinks your license key is not valid because it's tied to the machine that it was activated on. If that's your situation, you have uh, a recourse here. That file that we just saw a moment ago, that license.sublime license file, when you enter your license key inside of the license dialog, Sublime will create that file in the binary format that has the machined information in it. If you want to, what you can actually do is save a text file in that exact location with the information for your license textually as you would paste it inside of the license dialog box. Once you do that, quit Sublime, restart, and you'll see that you are in fact licensed and good to go. And because this is a textual version of the license, regardless of what machine you're on, it will still continue to work. So if you do this, be very careful and guard this license key because if it slips out and somebody else starts using it, it might get redacted. Well, I lost count, but that's the top questions we generally get about licenses in Sublime Text. Hopefully you found this helpful and informative and it's answered your questions. And if you need any further clarification or if I missed something, let me know down in the comments section down below. And while you're down there, you might want to show your support for the channel by thumb subscribing and sharing as you deem appropriate. And if you do subscribe, ring the bell notification icon, you'll know when the next video becomes available. And until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.